guys, how's it going? Y'all doing okay? So, my job has officially closed now, so I have a lot more free time, so now I can make more videos for your entertainment during the quarantine. So I've had this topic in my head for a while, and I constantly see Disney Plus ads on the internet, so I thought, why don't we find out how Disney became the massive empire that it is today? And there's also a lot of information to cover, so I decided to make this video into two parts. So, let's get right into it. In 1918, 18-year-old Walt Disney moved to Kansas City to pursue a career as a newspaper artist. His brother Roy got him a job at the Pesman Rubin Art Studio, and while there he befriended animator and producer Ub Uwerks. Disney and Uwerks worked at the Kansas City Film Ad Company, where they were contracted to make 12 cartoons called Newman's Laughograms. Although the Laughograms were popular, they didn't make much profit, and they eventually went bankrupt. In 1923, Disney, his brother Roy, and Erix moved to Los Angeles, California and founded what became the Disney Brothers Cartoon Studio, with their first space being the rear of a small office occupied by Holly Vermont Realty. There, Walt and his brother Roy produced a series of short live-action animated films called the Alice Comedies. In 1925, the brothers moved into a building on Hyperion Avenue in the Silver Lake part of Los Angeles and changed the name of the company to the Walt Disney Studio. It was here that Disney created the character Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Unfortunately, Disney's distributor had stolen the rights to the character and most of his staff, which led Disney to leave the distributor with Erix and starting over again. I guess Oswald wasn't so lucky after all. I'll see myself out. In 1928, Disney created another character called Mortimer Mouse, but Disney's wife Lillian didn't really like that name. She thought it was too pompous. So Disney changed the name to the iconic Mickey. And with the release of Steamboat Willie, Mickey Mouse became the first synchronized sound cartoon. Steamboat Willie opened at the Colony Theater in New York City in 1928 and became a huge sensation. The next year, Disney created Silly Symphonies featuring Mickey's newly created friends, Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, and Pluto. In 1929, Disney's production's distribution was moved to Columbia Pictures. That same year, the Walt Disney Studio is changed to Walt Disney Productions Limited, and three other Disney companies are formed. Walt Disney Enterprises, Disney Film Recording Company, and Loud Realty and Investment Company. Then in 1932, Disney's distribution was moved from Columbia Pictures to United Artists. Also in 1932, Walt Disney short Flowers and Trees, the first Technicolor cartoon, won an Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. In 1936, Disney's distribution is moved once again from United Artists to RKO Radio Pictures. In 1937, the release of the company's first full-length animated feature film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, was met with critical worldwide acclaim, and from the profits, Disney put down a deposit on 51 acres of land in a nearby community of Burbank, and began designing a modern studio for the purpose of making animated feature films. In 1938, Walt Disney Enterprises, Disney Film Recording Company, Loud Realty and Investment Company, and Walt Disney Productions Limited all merged to form Walt Disney Productions. During the war, Disney's employees created educational films for various federal agencies, including the 1942 animated short, The New Spirit, commissioned by the Treasury Department to encourage people to pay their income taxes as a way to just support the war effort. The Disney Studio also made training films for the American military. Although Walt Disney initially was reluctant to risk tarnishing his reputation as a non-political entertainer by producing blatantly propagandist works, his team eventually turned out animated shorts such as 1943's De Führer's Face, which made fun of Nazis and starred Donald Duck, and won an Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. However, by 1944, the company found itself short on funds, and they decided to re-release Snow White. In 1945, The Three Caballeros is released as the first live-action film combined with Disney cartoons. A year later, in 1948, Disney begins the True Life Adventures Nature Film Series, which lasts until 1960. And in 1949, the studio began production on its first feature-length live-action film, Treasure Island. In the early 1950s, Disney released animated classics such as Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan. 
Later in 1953, WED Enterprises is formed as an umbrella organization to control the rights to Disney and contain the Disneyland design team and own and operate several attractions inside Disneyland, including the Disneyland monorail system and Disneyland Railroad. Also in 1953, Disney makes a programming deal with American Broadcasting Paramount Theaters to fund Disneyland. In 1954, Disney ends its distribution deal with RKO Radio Pictures and founds its own distribution, Buena Vista Film Distribution Company Incorporated, to distribute Disney feature films. The same year, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is the first film distributed by Buena Vista Film Distribution Company. In 1955, Disneyland opens in Anaheim, California. The Mickey Mouse Club airs on ABC television, while Magic Kingdom premieres on ABC radio. Two years later, in 1957, Old Yeller is released and Zorro airs on ABC television. The series ran from 1957 to 1959. In 1961, Disney purchased the film and merchandising rights to A.A. A. Mills' Winnie the Pooh series, which continues to be a leading source of revenue for the company to this day. Then in 1964, Disney releases Mary Poppins, and it becomes the first Disney film to receive an Academy Award nomination for Best Picture. It won five awards, including Best Actress for Julie Andrews, Best Film Editing, Best Original Music Score, Best Visual Effects, and Best Original Song for Chim Chimarie. And then sadly, in 1966, Walt Disney is diagnosed with lung cancer, and on December 15th, he passes away at the age of 65. Sorry to end on a kind of a somber note, but the next part will be about how Disney evolved as a company without Walt. And that should be coming out very soon. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video and you learned something, please give it a thumbs up. That would be great. <laughs> And if you really like my content and you want to see more, please hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any comments, questions, or criticisms of any kind, please leave a comment down below. Alright guys, stay safe, wash your hands, and I will see you all next time. Bye!